Hello, everyone, and congratulations on finding this very special lightning talk. In this session, Conrad and I will be giving you a behind the scenes look into how DevNet Create operates. Since we don't have much time together, we're going to start by showing you the process first, and then we'll break it down bit by bit so you can see how it all works. Now, this may or may not be a bit under the radar, so if anyone asks, just tell them you got lost while looking for the rest room. They love API jokes. All right, let's take a look. Notice here that the DevNet Create site is currently offline. The server terminal is reporting that the kickstart process has not been initiated. It's time to take matters into our own hands or feet in this case. Just keep spinning, just keep spinning. What do we do? We spin. Yes, we've got power. Now we'll route that power to the DevNet detector. And with that online, we also need some lighting for it to be able to see sufficiently and do its job. Perfect. Up next, the detection process. Now, technically, I'm not supposed to be here, but I shouldn't trigger any alarms as long as I meet the minimum swag threshold. All right, here we go. Scanning. Nailed it. Now that should trigger the grounds irrigation system and after all, it's just as important to care for our environment as it is our website. Now the boot up process will only continue once our Meraki sensor detects enough water for those plants. Awesome. With the outside taken care of, it's time to prep the room. We'll increase the airflow, of course, to help keep the equipment cool, but it also helps us close the door. Just a bit further. Come on. Awesome. With the room secured, the final processes should start to kick in. And let's see. Wait. Oh, status bot seems to have messaged. This looks promising. We're online. We made it. As you can see, a lot goes into making this incredible event happen. Let's dive into exactly what we saw, how it all comes together, and maybe answer that question about just how many APIs we can fit into a single lightning talk. Here you'll see that we're reviewing the boot up script, which is written in Python. Of course, every good script starts with a number of import statements. Let's highlight a few of the important ones. Boot up utils references some custom code snippets that we'll use as helper functions in order to interact with some of the less standard or non-Cisco APIs. The Meraki library will be used a number of times throughout this boot up to simplify our code when interacting with various Meraki products. We're also using the WebEx Teams SDK library in order to send that final notification from our DevNet create status bot. And the rest of the imports simply provide additional functions to our overall code. After configuring the logging functionality, we get into the main process. The first block of code deals with the kickstart. As part of some overall energy consumption efforts uh, or conservation efforts, it turns out that once the server is off, we don't actually have enough power to start it back up without a little extra help, as you saw. In order to check if sufficient power is available, we start by using APIs to establish a connection with the kickstart power source and authenticate to it with our credentials. At this point, the boot up process will repeatedly loop until that kickstart power flag is set to true. And in order for this to happen, every cycle through the loop, it'll check in with the kickstart power source, or KPS for short, and we'll use an API call to determine how much power has been generated. Once the minimum threshold, which at this point is 250 kilojoules, has been met, the flag will be set to true, and we'll be on our way to the next step. With sufficient power finally available, we can begin the process of utilizing said power. We start by logging into the Meraki dashboard using the dashboard API library. We'll then grab the organization ID that corresponds for the DevNet Create organization. From there, we grab all the devices within the organization and also make a quick dictionary just to help map the device names to their serial numbers. This will make things a little bit easier going forward. The DevNet detector is physically connected to the device called main switch via port seven. Since we know that, we can again use the Meraki dashboard API 
to update the port settings for that port, and most importantly, enable PoE. Once PoE is enabled, it will take a few moments for the DevNet detector to power on and get connected to the Meraki cloud. This next section of code waits until the status of the DevNet detector returns as online. There's a quick API call here on line 66 that turns on the smart bulbs in the room with the DevNet detector. This allows the DevNet detector to accurately survey the room. With the DevNet detector online, we can use the Meraki dashboard API to generate a snapshot from the DevNet detector camera. We then take that snapshot and pass it to an image processing API, which extracts text from within the snapshot image. This part of the process will loop until the returned list of text extracted from the image contains the word DevNet, which indicates that someone or something with DevNet swag is in the frame. Once DevNet swag has been identified, the next logical course of action is to activate the irrigation system. Using a helper function, we can send an API request to the smart watering system to begin watering the DevNet create grounds. In order for to care for the grounds well, we've installed Meraki MT12 sensors to help us identify when water is detected. These sensors are so new that the API calls are still in beta, which means we just have to use a helper function to do that. Once we know that our outside is taken care of, we can focus on the final touches inside the server room. First off, every good server room is only as good as, as, good as its ventilation. So we start by using a helper function in order to make an API call to our smart fan telling it to turn on. As mentioned earlier, this ventilation system is dual purpose because it not only keeps the room cool, but it also moves enough air to help shut the door to the room. And before we can go live, our last check ensures that the server room door is shut using a Meraki MT20 sensor. Just like before, we make a simple API call to the Meraki dashboard to retrieve the current status and verify that it's closed. With everything else in place, we call one last helper function to finalize the boot up sequence. And last, but certainly not least, we authenticate via the WebEx API as our DevNet create status bot and send a message that the server is online with an included link to check it out. Did you catch how many different APIs were used in the process? There's roughly 10 major steps involved, but Several of those steps utilize multiple calls depending on authentication, maybe getting a list of devices, et cetera. So 30, 40, 50? And I hear they're planning on adding even more going forward. Either way, we hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look into how DevNet Create works. Feel free to rewatch the beginning of the session again and see it all come together. And if you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out the DevNet website to see what amazing things you can start connecting today. Thank you.